says, I could tell a story about climate change. I could read a poem about climate change. But climate change is not a story. Climate change is a crisis confronting humanity, the planet, and all the species. We are talking about a change that is destroying social conditions, human societies, a change that is benefiting transnational extractive corporations. And when we say we need system change, we really mean that we need system change. We're not talking about a situation where minor changes are adjusted here and there. It's not about what is comfortable. It's not about what changes we made that is feasible. It's about what is necessary. We're not talking about just what is possible. We're, we, we, we are demanding that the highest needs, things that need to be adjusted, things that, that need to be changed, the system of oppression, the system of capital accumulation, the system of slavery, system of neocolonialism and neoliberalism. These systems have to be changed. And this is what climate change calls for. It's not about conversations and debates and square brackets and whatever politicians like to do. It's about people taking charge of their future. It's about people demanding actions that will ensure that future generations will have a planet similar or something close to what we have now in which to grow develop, flourish, and do things in a way that just makes sense. I'll tell you a few, few things. It's, it's very clear that climate change is man-made. It's driven by the greed of humanity and by a short vision that what is pleasant it must be sustained even if it's killing us. It's an addiction to fossil fuels, so coal, to crude oil, to gas. It's well known that the dependence on fossil civilization is driving the planet to the brink. And rather than agree on leaving the oil in the soil, corporations are driving climate negotiations and more or less dictating to what policymakers agree to. I mean, how else could we imagine that after 21 years of climate negotiations, we are talking about nations coming together to talk about intended, nationally determined contributions to emission reduction. In a season of emergency, if we truly understand the crisis that is confronting the planet, we can't be talking about intentions, we should be talking about committed actions, actions that are agreed according to science that nations must take with full consideration of common but differentiated responsibilities. With a clear understanding that climate demands justice. That nations that are most impacted are nations that have contributed least to the crisis. That there is an ecological debt that needs to be paid, a climate debt that should be paid. It's not a time to debate about how to raise a hundred billion US dollars from 2020 for in five years time to begin to mitigate and combat global warming. No, it's not. We have to look closely at how much is being spent on warfare and destruction in the world today. Industrialized nations are spending at a minimum one trillion US dollars every year in warfare, in a moment. And yet nations cannot raise 10 billion dollars a year from now to 2020 to combat global warming. And we have a green climate fund that is an empty pause. fossil fuels and those who extract them and insist on burning up the world with the fuels, these are the climate criminals. We have crime scenes wherever you have a coal mine, wherever you have an oil well, that is a crime scene. Wherever fracking is being carried out, that is a crime scene. We can't just fold our arms and allow this to go on. We can't and we shouldn't. Now let's look at a few crime scenes in Africa. In Ghana, oil is being extracted off the coast of half Asini, and that's a territory with endemic fish species, and Ghana is rich in fisheries. And fisheries in the nation of Ghana 
brings as much income or more or like close to what crude oil will ever bring. And now the crude oil prices have tumbled, it really underscores the fact that we can't afford to toy with our fisheries. How about in Uganda? Oil is being drilled in Lake Albert, right on the headwaters of River Nile. In the midst of a nature reserve, games reserve, in the midst of what means something, what is significant, what is culturally essential to the people, that is where oil is being extracted. So the Rift Valley is now used as a way to place a rift in human societies and to compound the issues and the problems, the challenges of global warming. How about in Kenya? All is being drilled right now at Lake Tukana region, a World Heritage location. I mean, we could, we could give so many examples. In South Africa, where coal has been extracted for many years, in some communities around Whitbank, you are, people are literally moving over coal caves of fire because of the methane-induced fire burning underground under the society communities and creating sinkholes and intense danger to humanity. Yet those who make the profit have moved away somewhere else. And now we come to our own backyard in the Niger Delta. I don't need to speculate about the harm that has been inflicted on Niger Delta because of extraction of fossil fuels so that industry could burn um, and, and make profit while ecosystems are destroyed absolutely. We have it on good authority from the United Nations Environment Program that the Ogoni environment for one will require 30 years of consistent investment and work to clean up. 30 years. We're talking about it's a place where every water body is polluted with hydrocarbons. Sometimes some areas with benzene, 300 times above beyond what the World Health Organization would permit. We're talking about soils that are that are polluted to a depth of five meters just because corporations want to make profit without responsibility from extracting crude oil. And all this being burnt and pumped to the air, compounding the issues of global warming. This simply has to stop. System change will not be negotiated at the conference of parties. System change must be enforced by citizens of this world. And this is why solidarity is essential. And this is why we must stand together to say enough is enough. It's time for action, not, in ti not time to declare intentions. It's time to have commitment, de definite commitments, definite commitments. It's a time to realize that so many people have been displaced from their communities. We're having climate refugees. It, no, and, and it's just what we're having now, it's just a foretaste. If you look, people look at what is going on in Europe right now with refugees from Syria and other places trooping into the nations in the EU. Two things I would like to close with. One is a reflection on the refugee crisis in Europe. It's all before the whole world. Live on television, on cable, seen all over the world. Emotions pains, everything before the world. The same happened when there was an oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. The whole world was looking at speed. You know, the whole thing was shown on live on TV continuously. There were reactions, there was cleanup, but we have oil spills every day in the Niger Delta and nobody talks about it. Right now we're having, a, we're having climate refugees in Nigeria. We're having climate refugees in many parts of Africa. And when this intensifies, what Europe is experiencing now from Syria and other places will be nothing but child's play. Because we have only one planet. Not many of us can escape to Mars or to Pluto or to one asteroid or the other. This is our planet. And action must be taken now.